Hey guys, Sahita here with Beauty and the Kinks. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am a compliance analyst as well as a content creator here on YouTube as well as on Instagram. So most of my videos are about, you know, my weekly life, what I do working from home, sharing my routines and things like that. Today's video, however, is just going to be covering my journey in corporate America, how I got here, where I'm from, um, talk a little bit about my educational background, um, the field that I'm in now. I will also be giving you all some tea on the experience that I've had as a black woman. And honestly, it wasn't one of the best experiences from my previous employer. Um, I will, you know, talk a bit more just about passive racism and sexism in the workplace, as well as share my experience in pivoting to a different position that actually landed me um, a 30% salary increase. So if you're interested in learning more about my journey in corporate America, stay tuned. All right. so. Let's start by me introducing myself. My name is Tahita, as I mentioned, and I am an audit and compliance analyst. Um, I work in the healthcare pharmaceutical industry, and I work in a very unique and specific department. Um, so the work I do is not, not your typical compliance analyst. I don't work with regulatory compliance. I don't work with ethics and stuff like that. I work particularly in ensuring that the clients that we have and the programs that we have remain compliant as far as it comes to um, the government guidelines and stuff like that. So uh, with that being said, that is where I'm at now. It took me a minute to get here. I also want to point out that I'm looking down sometimes because I have my notes here on my iPad. So bear with me if you see me looking down. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So I'm originally from Belize. I was educated majority of my life in Belize. I was back and forth in the US for a short time as a child, but I completed my, what you guys would call elementary school um, education in Belize. I completed my high school education in Belize and I had some college that landed me an associate's degree in Belize. So when I moved to the United States of America, I had an associate's degree um, because I was on, on scholarships for majority of my, well, all of my high school, all of my college, I came over here like, yeah, we about to get this bachelor's. And I was hit with how much Americans pay for education. And coming from somebody who was on a scholarship and pretty much had their dad, you know, help out with any of their finances prior, I was not able, I was not about to get myself in that type of debt. So here we are now um, where I have, I can, I can unofficially say that I have my bachelor's. That is a completely different story for another time, so I won't get into why it's unofficial. But now, after I've gotten into the position that I'm in, I am able to say I have a bachelor's. So, so just wanted to kind of lay the foundation so that you know, yes, I experience um, a lot of things that typical African-American women deal with. However, I my background is not the same. So was raised in Belize, educated in Belize, moved over here with an associate's degree, and it was only later on in life that I was able to finally get my bachelor's degree. All right, so I moved here in 2005, and I will be honest, when I moved here, this was like, I moved here summer and by November. So yeah, by November of 2005, I had my first real job. And I was excited, y'all. I was excited because I was getting paid, get this, $7 an hour. <laughs> I was getting paid minimum wage here in America. But of course, me being from Belize, the dollar difference is two to one. So technically I was like, I'm getting paid $14? People in Belize only get paid $2 US for what I'm getting paid seven dollars for so um it was a wonderful experience it was you know your typical experience breaking into the working industry or the labor industry i got a typical retail job i was a cashier during christmas time at toys r us so that was that i eventually started you know eventually that was over with and i had an, um a handful of other retail jobs i did have a customer service job um in that time frame so from 2005 to 2013 i had a customer service job as well as a market research job and uh, so i had a market research job that allowed me to realize how convenient it was working in an office um compared to dealing with customer after customer after customer um in that sense and so 
I decided that I wanted to stay with an office job and I did not want to go back into retail. So whether it was customer service or whether it was, you know, something else, I just didn't want to go back to retail. So in 2013, I started looking for another job and I landed my job at um, my previous employer where I became a authorizations representative. So my previous employer, um, was a payment processing company and the department that I worked in was check specific so I as an authorizations representative was in a position to authorize checks for retail clients and also for gaming clients so the bulk of our business at the time was coming from casinos we would we have this program that allowed the casino patrons to cash their checks at the casino and use it obviously to to play so at that job, um, I will say this, that's when I realized having a great manager, a great leader, um, and having supportive people around you could push you to elevate. And I, within a year, I was promoted to authorizations lead, and that made me feel really, really good because there were people there that were working at that company or in that department for years and never you know they were never offered the position or they were never encouraged to apply for it so the fact that I got it I was extremely grateful and was like okay you can move up it gave me a sense of motivation so just on a personal level I my mindset was changing before with the other jobs the retail jobs I literally was making money to pay bills and kick it okay I'm gonna be 100% transparent um, I was not thinking about my future. I was in my early 20s, okay? <laughs> um, and so when I was being promoted, um, at the same time, we were also going through a change in this company where we merged with our competitor. Yeah, so with this merger, we were told that we were gonna stay on the competitor's business model and they were going to retain those employees. And so the people in my company <laughs> were you know or in my department at least were gonna be laid off and I remember my manager sitting me down and he's like do not call yourself a customer service representative do not say that you were a supervisor for a customer service department because a lot of what we did was talking to these patrons about how much they were able to cash um, so a lot of it was client facing it was that customer service oh you know you're able to cash up to five hundred dollars at this casino stuff like that so I got caught up in that and my manager sat me down and he's like no here's the skill set that you've acquired and that you needed to be um, successful in this role that's more than a customer service rep and so for him to point that out to me it made me realize I have more of an analytical background I have more of an analytical skill set rather than just saying hey I worked in customer service so with that with the changes going on eventually Luckily, they ended up scrapping the idea of sticking to the competitor's business model and laying off the people in my company um, due to some clause in the contract. They had like a certain amount of time to get that up and running and they didn't do it, so we retained the business. Um, my role was transferred to a different state. However, um, because we retained the business, I was able to apply for another role and that was the role that kind of changed my career and changed my professional outlook. So I applied to be a risk specialist or risk analyst. Um, at the time, it was under one director and I had never worked with him directly. However, I already knew that he was a little ditzy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a professional way to put that. He was, we would say he wasn't the brightest, you know, star in the sky. He wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed. Um, so I already knew in a bit, like I already understood kind of what I was signing up for. However, with my with my previous manager still remaining in his role, I knew that I would also be working very closely with him and I had that comfort and support knowing that I had people in the office as well that were gonna support me through this role. Okay, so under him, under this new direct, under this director, and 
and under my new role as risk analyst I learned so so much about um, that book of business that part of the business I was able to pivot myself from working with the casino patrons or the retail patrons or c customers and I started working on the clients so the casinos the businesses themselves and creating profit and loss reports analyzing the risk to their programs with us um you know changing things on the back end changing algorithms on the back end to ensure that we were you know limiting our losses and also still trying to have these casinos thrive um as far as their volume goes so i learned so so much in that position um just from a professional level uh however i also went through a lot emotionally um uh, mentally it was a stressful job so one of the first I won't call it a red flag, but one of the first slaps in the face, I guess, was when they hired an employee, a new employee, and, and they gave her a higher title than me. At that point, I had been with the company for some years. I had known the business inside and out, and this person had nothing, you know, no industry knowledge on what we were doing, but they were able to come in and get a higher salary and obviously a higher title than me so that was kind of a little downer but i was like you know what it's okay and the person that they hired was actually really really cool so me and her got along very very well we're still cool up to today even though we're with completely different companies now we still keep in contact and hang out and stuff like that we're not hang out because we haven't seen each other in a while but we i just talked to her like two weeks ago um and i'm grateful for her because she was a white young woman younger than me um, and she was very very transparent with her salary and she was very open about the treatment and the difference in treatment when it came to me and when it came to her so when she came along it kind of was very apparent that some of the mannerisms of my director was I don't want to say racist because to me when I think racist I think of you know the Ku Klux Klan and people just calling, you know, throwing out the N word and stuff like that. So I don't want, I don't want to paint that aggressive picture, but I do want you to think of just the unconscious bias that people have based on racism, um, based on stereotypes of black people or people of color in general. Um, and what we noticed, my colleague and I, was that I could present an idea to the director so we would have these meetings and I would present my idea and I would say hey you know I think it would be beneficial if we were to paint the sky blue and then paint the clouds white so I would I would make my suggestion and he would come in and he would say no nah, I don't think that's gonna work nope it's not gonna work then she would come in and she would say the same exact thing. This was all, she, we were we were in cahoots because we knew what was happening. So I was like, give me something that I could put on paper, that I can make a paper trail and say, this is, this is how you treated me, this is how you treated her, and there's a problem here. Um, so she would come in and she would say, hey, I think we should paint the sky blue and paint the clouds white. And he'd be like, hmm, okay, I'll think about that. And then we realized he was also sexist. Um, so he would come in two days later and we would push the same agenda. I would then have the opportunity to say, hey, do you realize that two days ago I said we should paint the sky blue and paint the clouds white and you shut me down. But when it came to her, you were more open and receptive to her you know, idea. Even though you didn't fully approve it, you were more open and receptive you know what's what's going on why aren't you open to my ideas and he would call me aggressive red flag he would call me defensive red flag ask me why I'm so angry and that's when I personally started experiencing the stereotype that's what that was my personal first experience of the stereotype that people put on black women for just literally speaking their minds or asking why for defending themselves or you know not necessarily defending themselves but just standing up for themselves um and then of course we realized after that that he was sexist because then he would come around and he would kind of take the same idea we both had shut it down and then repackage the idea and sell it to us as though it was his own he refused to give us credit 
for things that we would throw at him. So it would take two months for him to come back around. We would waste two months of potential work that could help save the business and build a business. And he would come back around and then say, oh, you know what? I think we should probably, I'm gonna go ahead and, and make sure that we, you know, paint the sky blue and paint the clouds white. You guys, you know, because I think that's gonna be beneficial to us. And he would literally try to sell it to us as though it was his idea. So that was extremely frustrating. And it forced me to, it forced both of us actually, because I was dealing with the racism, the passive racism on top of the, um, the sexism and she was also just dealing with the sexism we would pitch these ideas and we would save the company thousands thousands hundreds of thousands of dollars and we realized we actually do a lot more than what we're being paid for so we did some research we realized that we were grossly underpaid um and we tried to pitch to him hey for our city, for our you know region, this is what we should be paid. In through one ear, out through the next. We were just done at that point. When he just ignored us for all of our cries that we were putting out there, like we need to get paid more than this. We're, we have such an important role to this company and we're getting paid pennies to the dollar. Like we deserve more. And he just wouldn't, he wouldn't even try for us. So. She decided to look, I decided to look. She left in, I think the end of August, beginning of September, and I was out of there by the end of September. So, um, and because, this is the key here, this is the answer to, and I, I know it sounds cliche, I know a lot of people have said it before, but it's extremely hard to get a big increase in salary when you stay with the company that you're with. Um, that is why it is encouraged to, it's encur people encourage you to move from different companies, um, you know, every, every few years because it's very hard to get an increase, um, a, a substantial increase. I literally applied for a job at my current employer. It's a different role. It's actually, I applied for the role that I'm in right now, but I was hired as something else. So I applied for this role and I gave them a dollar amount and it was a it was a 22% increase from what I was currently being paid at my previous employer or what I was being paid at my previous employer and they came back and they offered me a salary which was like a 30% 36% increase I so not only was I being grossly underpaid at this company when I applied, I tried to increase my salary by 20, 22%. The company that hired me actually offered me a salary of 36% higher, uh, an increase of 36% higher. That is when I realized it's game over. People are out here getting paid for the work that they put in. They are out here getting paid and they're being valued. Just the values of this company. First of all, this company that I currently work for is, I think, a top a Fortune Top 20 company. Um, the core values of the business, amazing. CEO, amazing. Um, the, the team that I work with, amazing. So I would love to stay, but I am coming to that three, four year mark of in order to pivot, in order to get another substantial increase, I might just have to move. And that's sad, but that is what I'll have to do. So again, I wanted to share with you guys um, just my experience, you know, navigating through corporate America as a black woman. Um, that was the bad experience. My current experience is I have people, well, this company here, they are very big on your career goals and helping support that. And I have a manager who's also extremely supportive. Also very, um, I've had two managers in this company and I have had both of them step in when I was overwhelmed and stressed out and they would try to find a way to work around it. So find a company whose core values align with what you're looking for. Um, do not be afraid to change. Do not be afraid to move around because it's scary at first, but it, 
in the long run it's beneficial because here not only have I learned so much more and gained so much more experience um, now I have that title under my belt you know of just working for a company that is a top 20 company so yeah that is my story about my, that is my journey on you know moving from the retail space as someone who did not have a bachelor's degree as someone who didn't have any tech degrees the last like I said I unofficially can say that I have my bachelor's now I can say that I became certified a certified scrum master last year um, so I have been working on my skill set it's just that I want to encourage black women especially to go out there and go for jobs even if you think you might be underqualified, even if you think that, um, you know, what they're looking for is not necessary, it doesn't necessarily match 100% to what your resume is stating, still go for it because there are people out here being paid tons and tons of money, tons and tons of cash, and they don't know half the stuff you know. So stop being afraid. Now let me go ahead and So now I want to share four tips that I have personally used to help pivot myself in my career. So I mentioned earlier in the video that my previous manager helped me to identify certain skill sets. So the first tip is identify your transferable skills. Look at your current skill set, identify which ones can be applied to other roles or industries, and then this will help narrow down your potential career path. You know, like I said, he sat me down and he said, Stop thinking of yourself as some customer service rep. You have to analyze every transaction that you approve. You have to analyze every increase that you give. You have to analyze every um, application that you accept. So you not only are you managing the risk of each transaction or each application or account, you're also just analyzing the potential risk. And that is what made me say, oh, okay. I'm analytical and I have some risk management under my belt. So identify those skills um, that can help you get the role or you know get into the industry that you are trying to get into. The second one is network. Again, shout out to my previous manager or my previous employer. He was um, very pivotal in pushing me and encouraging the other director to like she's a good candidate, she's a great employee, she's done this, look she was promoted within a year of working here, she's great. Like having his support and then also just supporting me as an employee was beneficial. So network, make those connections internally and externally. You never know who might bring up your name in a room um, full of opportunities for you. So definitely network, remain professional, remain kind um, throughout your job search or throughout your professional career. Gain new skills. Also now, now that I'm trying to pivot myself into a different position or a different role, I am utilizing the fact that I have my Scrum Master certification. I'm also trying to revamp my SQL skills. I'm trying to learn more about Microsoft BI. Like I'm learning new things so that I can add that to my resume so that that can be beneficial or an add on when I'm trying to sell myself to um, the next hiring manager. And then lastly, update your resume update your cover letters if you use one and when i say update i mean i used to just use the same resume for every single position that i applied for and while i do have a general template or a general resume that i send out there are certain things that i tweak when i am looking for a specific role or when i'm um you know very aligned with a specific role that I want to apply for so an example would be the fact that my general resume shows that I was a risk analyst um, at my previous employer but when I am applying for business analyst positions I change that to business analyst dash risk because I was analyzing an entire business. I was looking at the profits that we could make that for that business. I was looking at the um, potential losses of that business. I was checking out the risk, um, risk from their current patrons, risk from new patrons, uh, risk from um, the new industry because we ended up moving obviously from brick and mortar casinos and incorporating iGaming. So I include all of that. I was analyzing that client's business on a whole to make certain decisions to ensure that they had 
you know, they could get the max profits that I could help provide and the lowest losses. So again, now that I'm looking for more business analytical positions or business analyst positions, I have changed that. I've tweaked that on my resume so that that is picked up. Um, yeah. So, and then that way when I am, so that way when I am, um, you know, selected for an interview, I can further explain that I was uh, a risk analyst, but really my role was analyzing the entire business. So there you have it. So that was a lot. That was a lot. But I hope that you guys enjoyed my little tea on what I went through as a black woman in corporate America, um, how I forced myself to pivot out of that position. And now I'm in, uh, I'm at a very nice company with a great manager, great team, um, who's always pushing me to do better. Of course, I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to become complacent. So I'm always looking for something new and something that can be more beneficial to me. So I am, you know, open and looking not only to move up, but also to improve improve my skill set. So thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you've made it to the end, thank you, thank you, thank you. Do not forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful or if you enjoyed my little story about that one time in corporate America when somebody tried to come for me. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Like I mentioned, I do do weekly vlogs where I show a little bit about my work from home life as a compliance analyst. Um, so if you are interested in that type of stuff, definitely hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you for your love and support. Till next time. Bye guys.